I was I was wondering, without having a mini camp, will this will this put you a, a little bit behind in terms of uh, getting ready for the season, or do you think you could just pick it right up with uh, training camp? Um, yeah, that's an interesting question. I mean, I feel like are we behind on where we would be on a normal year? Maybe, but I mean, since the whole league is doing that, not really. Um, obviously, you know, we're doing as much as we can now. Uh, in terms of just obviously knowledge of the game, you know, it's only so much you could do, you know, in meetings though, without being able to go on the field and that stuff's kind of left to yourself. So uh, I think the biggest thing for us is just to stay committed to this process and, uh, you know, get out of it what we can. So um, whatever that takes, you know, obviously I think our team needs to do that in order to be ready for the season. But uh, other than that, I don't think it's going to be a disadvantage because everybody else is doing it in the league. Thanks much. I appreciate that. Thanks for doing this too. Thank you. Okay, I'm Jimena Lugo La Torre from WDCN, La Nueva 87.7 FM. Um, the last time we saw you was against Tennessee on the four down play in the playoffs as a rookie. What have you been working on to become a better player? Uh, everything, honestly. Um, just get my body in, a, in better shape for the season, uh, get my legs stronger to just be able to, to endure 16 games. Um, obviously, brushing up on my knowledge of the game, watching a lot of film of myself, um, things that I could have done better. Um, I just feel like I've been getting better as an all-around player. I mean, obviously, like, like you said, I was just a rookie. Um, and obviously, you know, I went there and did what I could. I'm capable of a lot more, and uh, I'll be able to play faster this year, uh, have more chemistry with Lamar, and just be able to go out there and just play the game the way I know how to play. Miles, hey, Pete Gilbert here with WBAL, and uh, thanks for doing this today. You know, as you watch Hollywood working out uh, with Lamar in Florida, and he's obviously getting jacked as well, doing all he can for that. As you, and you're not being down there with him a little bit, are you getting a little, are you a little jealous of that? Or are you, is he thinking like he's going to, you know, he's working on that chemistry ahead of you because you're, you still got to fight for balls, right? Absolutely. Absolutely. So, I mean, before I was planning on going down there before all this stuff happened, but, uh, you know, unfortunately, I couldn't, I didn't get a chance to get down there, but uh, next week, you know, I'll be down there training with them training with those guys so uh it'll be exciting for us obviously to be together and uh just work on that chemistry you know we got to do that as much as can as much as we can you know i plan on going down there again this just won't be my only time of the year but uh yeah no it's, it's definitely you know it's kind of an awkward you know situation for everybody because you know those two are lucky that they live in you know florida together so you know i've been working with trace a lot more because he's closer to me in baltimore so uh you know it's i think it's the most important thing is just you know doing what you can so the fact that, you know, I have Trey's here to be able to work with me and, you know, throw balls is, uh, is huge. Hey, Miles, Kyle Barber here. Uh, though it's been a strange one, how helpful has it been having a full off season to rest, recuperate, and then also prepare for your second season? Uh, it's been good. You know, my body was kind of beat up after the season. Um, I didn't realize how hard 16, well, really 17 games would be regardless of, you know, the, the, the bye week and, the, and, you know, the bye in the playoffs. Uh, I didn't realize, you know, how hard it would be. Um, in college, you know, the best teams might play 14 games, and that's maybe. Uh, so for us, you know, it, it, it was really hard for me to come in and adjust to that and be able to play in all 17 games and uh, not really miss a beat. So obviously I had some nagging injuries at the end of the season. But, uh, yeah, no, I think that's definitely one of the biggest things that I kind of maybe was – didn't expect as much as just the wear and tear in your body through a course of the season. but. You know, I'm, I'm looking before you today and I feel great. My body feels great. And uh, I feel like I'm ready to play another season and just, you know, I know what to expect now. Miles, this is Jameson from uh, ESPN. You know, last year when you came into league, uh, the perception about the Ravens, I don't think a lot of people even favor the Ravens to win the division. Uh, now you're everywhere you see the Ravens are one of the Super Bowl favorites. How do expectations and the heightened expectations, do that change, does that change the team's mindset at all? Or, or does that do anything as far as the team's uh, focus uh, going into the season? I mean, I think the great teams, it, it doesn't. Um, I think we have the potential to be a great team. So for us, we can't really listen to that outside noise. And I don't think we ever have. Um, we lost to Tennessee because we didn't play well enough to win. It wasn't because we thought we were better than what we really were. Um, at the end of the day, you know, the only expectations that matter is the ones we have for ourselves. So if we go out there and say our expectation is to win the Super Bowl, we'll have to start with week one. Um, so I think, you know, Harvest is great on, you know, talking about that and talking about how, you know, week one, it starts week one. It doesn't start 
week 16. It doesn't start at the Super Bowl. You know, you have to build yourself a Super Bowl team. You're not a Super Bowl team day one. So uh, for us, like, like I said, it's just taking a look. one game, one step at a time, one meeting at a time, one virtual meeting at a time. Um, so it, it's huge for us to take those steps. And uh, I think we're doing that. You know, we have the right people on this team. Uh, we, we, we have great chemistry and great character on this team. So uh, I was fortunate to walk into that as a rookie. And now I'm ready to take it to the next level for this team and uh, just kind of be on the other end of it now. You know, uh, now I'm considered an older guy, and especially in this office. I mean, because we had so many rookies last year and everybody is, you know, really young. So for me, you know, I have to be, you know, one of the leaders in the receiver room now, especially with Willie and Hollywood. And, uh, you know, just be able to go out there and, you know, give some of that knowledge down for my rookie year to make it easier for other rookies. Um, hey, Miles, this is uh, Childs Walker with the Baltimore Sun. Um, both John Harbaugh and Eric DaCosta have said that they feel like you're going to take a significant step forward this year. But I'm wondering, does, does all the uncertainty uh, about the schedule create maybe a little extra frustration for you, given that you are going into what could be such a pivotal year in your career? Uh, no, because at the end of the day, I'm still playing football. Uh, if we have a season, obviously, yeah. But um, at the end of the day, I'm playing football. It doesn't matter where I'm playing it, who I'm playing it against, you know, football's football. There's going to be 11 people on each side of the ball, and I just have to go out there and do my job. So, uh, no, it doesn't affect me as much, you know. I'd rather, Like, having a season, obviously, is a big deal for us. Obviously, we want to have a season, but at the same time, you know, we want to be able to keep the fans safe and ourselves safe. So, uh, but other than that, no, I'm not worried about anything else. Hey, Miles, this is Sean Stepner from WMAR ABC in Baltimore. Thanks for doing this, man. Um, before my question, just a quick follow up to going down to Florida. Besides Lamar and uh, Marquise, um, you know, who else are you going to be? Who else is going to be part of that group getting together and uh, training? I mean, we're still finalizing it. Um, there's going to be a lot of guys down there. I, I could name all of them, and I'm not sure who will be there and who won't be there, but. Um, yeah, there's definitely gonna be some guys on there. It'll, it'll be a group. Cool. And um, so this question is regarding, you know, watching the draft last month and just wanted to gauge your thoughts on the Ravens taking a couple of receivers. Of course, you know, Duvernay was 92nd. You were 93rd the, the year before. Just your thoughts on more rookie receivers among the receiving court. Uh, excited. Excited to have those guys with us. Um, I think they bring great versatility. I think that's one thing that you could say about our receiving core. You literally look up and down, you know, the core, and you don't say, like, okay, this guy's like that. This guy's like that guy. Um, I think we're all different. We all have different sets of, of talent, and I think that's what's going to make us work well this year. Miles, this is uh, Aaron Kasnitz at, at Penn Live. Thanks for doing this for us. Um, we hear a lot about, you know, virtual – OTAs or whatever, but can you walk us through what, what that actually means for you? What's that four hour day like? Are, who are you in meetings with and, and what's that yeah. like for, for you? So, yeah, so it just, I mean, it really just depends on the day, but uh, like you'll have like your, your, your workout, which necessarily won't last the whole two hours. So you'll have like maybe like a 30 minute break before you go to your actual, you know, meetings. And that could be, we might start off with a team meeting with everybody in there and Harv might have a guest speaker. Like uh, today we actually had uh, Ed Reed and the week before that we had uh ray lewis so it was for us it just it just depends on day to day um so we have a speaker and then we'll break off and then for offense we'll go in position meetings so we'll meet with coach kelly the rest of the receivers and we'll be in there and then we'll go into a special teams meeting and then we'll end it there miles this is jeff Zrebeck from the athletic you mentioned earlier wanting to play faster um, what is the key to doing that in, in your mind? And last year as a rookie was, you know, having so much on your plate and thinking, does that prevent you a little from playing as fast as you uh, wanted to play? Well, yeah, absolutely. I mean, I'm, I'm a fast guy. That's not, that's not what it's about when I say playing fast. Uh, by playing fast, I mean, it's just a, in terms of, I, I guess if I could put it this way, like when you're younger, you, you worry about like, okay, what do I have to do? When you're older, you know, like, why am I doing this? Like, this makes sense. It, everything just starts to roll off of it. So now I'm worried about how to do things right. I'm not worried about what I need to do right. I need to know how to do it right. So, and that's that's the part of film study that you don't have time for like that during the season. I got to prepare for the other team. You know, I don't have time to watch every little thing that I'm doing wrong. And now I got to take a step back and look at that. And I say, okay, I can do it this way. I can do it that way. I already know what I need to do now. I just need to know how I can get better at what I'm doing. So that's what I mean by play faster. Um, it's really just like the play speed, recognizing coverages, um, certain ways to run routes against different coverages, things like that. 
Hey, Miles, this is uh, Aaron Kasnitz again. Um, a, a lot of receivers and quarterbacks, when they get together, like you guys plan to do next week, talk about that it's not just on field, but you, you can sort of bond away from the team off the field. Do, do you have any plans? Do you know kind of what, what the game plan is for, for how you're going to spend your time down there? Uh, we have no clue. I mean, uh, I would imagine that we'll be able to get together, obviously, and do more than football things, hopefully. But, uh, yeah, we don't we don't know. I mean, we just know that for right now we just have the plan to go down there and, you know, be able to run through some plays on offense and, you know, just kind of, you know, just play football a little bit, something we get back to that we have fun doing. Hey, Miles, this is uh, – yeah, is... If you can – last year you, you stood out, obviously, in the OTAs and the mini camp and all that as a rookie. Can you put yourself in the shoes of the rookies coming in and talk about how difficult it, it would be to just start on day one of training camp and not have all the OTAs and the mini camps? Well, I mean, for me, I kind of did. I I maybe got maybe two reps a set in mini camp. I didn't do any OTAs. Um, I did rookie mini camp, but other than that, I didn't play with the team until I was my first day of training camp. I would say uh, my receiver coach kind of broke it down perfectly for me. I mean, we were talking the whole preseason, um, then we got to the season, and even in the postseason. But uh, each step is a new level. Rookie mini camp is going to be different from college. You know, you go into OTAs, OTAs is going to be different from mini camp, and then you get to training camp that's different from OTAs. Preseason games is different from regular games, and uh, the postseason is a whole other level. So, um, really those steps are crucial i mean um i think i i missed out on that you know obviously not participating in otas uh but for me even when i was going through the season i could see those steps happening and progressing and so now like you look back on it and those aren't things that i have to worry about but you know you try to tell those rookies those things and like it's okay to make mistakes as a rookie you know you just want to make sure that you're playing fast and you know you know your playbook as well as possible um you know, we, nobody expects, you know, rookies to come in and be perfect. And that was my, that was probably the hardest thing for me. You know, I was coming in there trying to be perfect and nobody ever is. Um, you just got to go in there, ask what they do or do what they ask of you. So uh, I think that would be probably be my biggest advice to the rookies. Um, hey, Miles, this Ryan, is Mike Childs with the Baltimore Ravens. Like, um, um, can you share a little bit about what Ed Reed's message was today and, and what it meant to you to hear from a, a legend like that? Yeah, uh, it's awesome. I mean, we always talk about when you think of the Ravens, Ed Reed's a name that immediately comes up. Uh, so for us, his biggest message was take care of business, you know, whatever it is. Because obviously, you know, we can only do so much with the circumstances and everybody understands that, but that doesn't mean like we're taking this time off, you know, just be intentional on in what you're learning, uh, be intentional on getting better in your craft. Um, and that goes a long way, especially for someone from Ed Reed who has done it all. Um, so for, for us, I think it was huge just hearing what he had to say and uh, really just kind of, you know, just picking his brain a little bit. I mean, he's talking about your finances to, you know, recovery to watching film. Uh, it's awesome. I mean, even we even got into like cleaning up the locker room and how that leads to being a better team and, you know, off the field stuff. So it's awesome hearing from a guy like that. He's a, he's an all time great leader and all time great player. Um, hey, Miles Childs with the Baltimore Sun again. Um, there continues to be speculation about the possibility of Antonio Brown signing with the Ravens. Do you have any thoughts on that? I mean, no. I mean, uh, other than I think he's a great receiver. Yeah. Hey, Miles, this is Sean Stepner with uh, ABC Baltimore WMAR again. Um, so I know you have done a couple of fundraising efforts for COVID, or I mean, a few maybe. I don't know if you could share your 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 thoughts on, um, you know, what you've done over these past couple of months to raise money for, for COVID-19 relief efforts and, and why that's important to you. Yeah, um, actually, so the, re the re biggest reason why it's important for me is because my mom's a nurse. Um, she's a labor and delivery nurse. So she works in a hospital that takes care of COVID patients, but she's on another wing of it. But, you know, she's still on the front line every day, you know, being around. She's had patients who've had it. Um, that's why it was important for me. But at the same time, you know, I realized that it's hard for everybody going through this, but I'm so fortunate. I'm blessed. You know, I'm not having to worry about, oh, is my job going to be here for me? You know, I'm not worried about those things. I'm not worried about paying my bills. You know, so I'm fortunate enough to look back. And so I wanted to give people, you know, a bright spot to be able to, you know, kind of relax and talk to me. So I did a virtual meet and greet. So it's pretty much like what we're doing now, except I would have somebody on here and we'd be able to just talk. And then I donated all that money to, uh, to United Way in Chicago.
Hey, Miles, Pete Gilbert here again. Uh, as you watch the workout video, like today, we saw Marlon going up a stone pile and, uh, you know, just it looked like a grueling effort and, and Hollywood's different uh, um, efforts. And you're, you're chasing down, trying to catch your own ball with the jugs machine. Is there a sense of almost competition between you guys uh, to put together the workout? And, and, and then, of course, the social media aspect of it as well. I mean, it's really just fun. Uh, I, I think we get bored sometimes, so it's just fun to come up with new ways to work out. Um, I did see Marlins. That that did look fun. Um, but, yeah, honestly, that's all it is. I mean, we just get together, like, okay, what can we do? Like, Hollywood challenges. So I said, all right, but I got to go do that. Call Justice Hill over, and we and we make it work. But, honestly, like I said, it's just fun. I mean, it's fun finding different ways to work out. <laughs> so, uh, for us, yeah, I think that's all it is for us. It's not really a competition, though. Miles, it's uh, Andrew Gillis from NBC Sports Washington. You mentioned that, um, you know, with the virtual meetings and everything like that, with, you know, last year, just the off season that you had and coming in, it was kind of new for you. What can you tell the rookies coming in now that, you know, they can't have on-field workouts with the team? Is there anything that you can share with them to kind of get them as ready as possible for whenever training camp happens? Yeah, I would say film is going to be huge, especially during July. Um, you know, a lot of the times for rookies, so you even even though I wasn't participating in OTAs, I was still in all the meetings. I was doing everything else. I just couldn't, you know, practice if I was injured. So for me, you know, I was still out there with the team. I was still working out. I just wasn't running routes. So even then for rookies, it gets a little bit kind of hard and stressful because you're trying to pick up a whole new playbook. And in July, you have a chance to relax a little bit. And I don't think it's going to be like that this year, especially for rookies. I mean, all of July, you're going to have to be able to learn that playbook and then come in and, you know, be able to do it at full speed in training camp. So I think that'd probably be my biggest thing in, in July. Just make sure you're still um, going through the playbook every day and, you know, just learning something new every day. Miles, this is Jameson from ESPN. Uh, you know, Coach Harbaugh said at the end of the year how he anticipates defenses looking at your offense and trying to do a counter and how this offense has to evolve. Uh, what, how do you think this offense will look differently maybe uh, this year compared to last year? Do you, do you foresee uh, some added wrinkles uh, to what you guys did last year so successfully? Uh, I mean, I know Giro's a genius, so <laughs> he's going to find something out. So uh, I think the biggest thing for us is just to be ready and whatever, you know, whatever he throws our way. I think we've been a resilient team in the fact that, you know, if we have a new play, we learn it like it's back of our hands. So for us, especially for receivers, you know, we just have to do our job. And, you know, when it's called upon us, we got to make the play. Miles, uh, Pete Gilbert, and I'll jump in for one last one if you don't, if you don't mind. Have you talked to the, the, any of the rookie receivers? Have you talked with James and Devin and just kind of welcome them in, or what's, what's that process like? Yeah, yeah, we've talked to them. Uh, you know, from, from my experiences with them, they're, they're incredibly smart. Uh, I think they fit right in in, uh, in, in the locker room. Uh, you know, like, like I said, we're in virtual meetings every day, so, you know, we'll chop it up real quick before and after meetings and just uh, kind of chill. But, no, they're definitely – they're great guys. Um, you know, like I'm excited to see what they do on the field with us. And uh, I think the biggest thing, especially for them, is just to, you know, like I said, just learn the playbook. Um, don't have pressure in trying to go in there and do everything perfect. Um, I think that's the biggest issue that all rookies have. Uh, just go in there and play hard and, you know, do what you're capable of doing, do why we drafted you. Um, so, yeah, that would probably be my, my advice to them. Hey, anything else for Miles today? All right, very good. Well, Miles, thank you so much for taking the time today. We really appreciate it. And uh, again, we'll see everybody back here at 2.30 tomorrow with Ronnie Stanley. Thanks, Miles. Thank you, guys. Thanks, I appreciate it. Thanks, Miles.